स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students. In today's class, what we are going to do is we are going to use fundamental solution. So what is so special? Okay. So the speciality. Let me put it this way: the speciality of fundamental solution solution is it helps us. to solve poisson equation okay so non homogeneous so see fundamental solution essentially deals with a homogeneous problem right laplace equation laplace equation is zero but what we are saying is we can use that particular function from the solution of a homogeneous problem in r minus 0 and use it to solve something which is um, like a inhomogeneous problem so how to do that yeah let's see so motivation motivation now you see what happens is this. let's say x going to phi of x yeah this is harmonic harmonic For x not equal to zero, yes or no? Yeah, because we have seen that uh, phi solves this problem. Yeah, uh, for uh, all x in R n except at zero. So basically, this is a harmonic for x not equal to zero. Yeah, if this happens, you just shift the origin to y. Huh? Here the origin is at zero, so you just shift it to y. What happens is therefore x going to going to phi of y minus x. Yeah, or x minus y is. harmonic for x not equals to y yeah i can do this thing why because essentially harmonic functions are translation invariant right yeah uh, we talked about it earlier laplace equations are rotation and translation invariant okay so basically if you translate the function it is going to be harmonic it's not a problem yeah so if that happens then for a for a nice yeah it's not very mathematical but let me write it like this f from rn to r f from r n to r yeah uh, the map x going to phi of x minus y f of y yeah so this is not x not equals to y of course is harmonic is harmonic for each y in r n yes Yeah, it is of course harmonic. So if you fix a y in R n, uh, this is going to be harmonic. Yeah, why? Because you see, when you fix a y in R n, f of y, f is some function at the point y, it is taking some real value. So basically, you are essentially multiplying it by a constant. Yes or no? See, this function is a function of x. X is going to this thing. It's a function of x. As a function of x, this is harmonic. It's not of harmonic with respect to y. You do understand what I'm saying? See. X going to phi of x minus y is harmonic. Yeah, it is harmonic as a function of x. Yeah. Again, here when I am multiplying it by f of y for a fixed y, f of y is just a constant essentially. So I am multiplying it by constant. It's a function of x. Yeah. And so it remains harmonic. It's not a problem because you see, if Laplacian of u equals to zero, Laplacian of c times u, uh, let's say, will it be zero? Of course, because it is a linear function, right? So this is zero. So this c here is f of y. no why may change and that uh, does not matter i mean it's going to be the same thing yeah so uh, essentially what is happening is we are saying that this this kind of function has to be harmonic right now if it is harmonic then you see uh, then there is a reasoning so we can say that let's say if you just integrate it over rn okay so integrate over rn okay p of x minus y okay f of y dy f of y dy this particular thing this should solve therefore this should solve the 
Laplace equation. Laplace equation. Yes. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? See, uh, for every x it is harmonic, right? So if for every x this solves the Laplace equation. So basically, if I am taking the integration on R n, yeah, and uh, let's say if I'm defining u x to be that particular thing, uh, it's a new function u x. Yeah? This is I'm defining it like this. Then I, I can say that this solves the Laplace equation u, yeah. But the problem is it doesn't. Yeah, but, but it does not, it does not, yeah, but it does not. And now, what is the problem? The problem is, see, uh, let's say if Laplacian of u, if you just write it like this, uh, I mean, if you take the, I mean, Laplacian inside of this thing, it will be um, delta x of e of x minus y, f of y dy, right? It should be something like this. And delta x of f of x minus y is 0, so it has to be 0. So, it's, I mean, a priori, a priori, it seems to solve the Laplace equation, okay? But it does not. Why it does not? Because, you see, this particular function, okay, uh, because it does not. Yeah, I should have wrote, in, wrote it here. Uh, since since you see the second derivative of p at the point x minus y, yeah, this is not summable near x equals to y. Is, is this clear? See, there is a singularity at x equals to y. It, this phi blows up, right? So, d2 of phi, that is, is not integrable. Summable, whenever I say summable, I mean integrable integrable clear yes. yeah it is not integrable near x equals to y and hence uh, and and therefore the um, differentiation under the sign of integration differentiation under the sign of integration is not valid clear yes then it is not valid, that's what, okay? So, what happens now? So, what we are going to do is, you see, um, so this is a theorem, huh? we start with this, we start, we start by assumption on F. So, essentially, I said nice F, huh? what is nice, let's see. So, we start with F, which is uh, C infinity, or you can take C2, I mean, it's not a problem, let's say C2, yeah, and uh, with the compact support in Rn. Clear? Okay. So, uh, twice differentiable with compact support. Twice differentiable with compact support. Compact support. Okay. So, uh, once I start with this f, then there is the theorem which I want to solve. Yeah. So, the theorem says that um, define u of x. Yeah. You define it like integral over like this yeah integral over rn phi of x minus y f of y dy you define it like this okay where phi where phi is the fundamental solution okay fundamental solution okay where phi is a fundamental solution okay uh, then then number a u which you get u yeah the it is t2 of rn okay see if you are defining it like this c is not uh, i mean the twice derivative this has a singularity at x equals to y yeah but see, still it is saying that if you define it u of x like this then you have to be c2 of rn yeah moreover u solves yeah see we were trying to make u2 solve this equation, Laplacian u equals to f. Actually, what happens is you solve this equation, the Poisson equation, okay, in Rn. Is this clear? Yeah. So, basically, we were thinking that it has, it should be, it should solve the Laplace equation, but in reality, it solves the Poisson equation. And uh, we'll see later on that, uh, I mean, this actually can be useful to provide a formula for the solution, okay? So, we'll look at it later. I mean, we'll revisit this particular thing later, okay? Uh, 
so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to start with the proof of this thing proof one. so before i start with the proof of this thing let me give you a small uh, it's not a remark but um, let me give you um, a suggestion yeah the calculations which i am going to do so this is this is you have you should be very familiar with this sort of estimate so we are basically going to do some estimates yeah please understand this thing in uh, in pds the research research problems yeah uh, if you do theoretical pds these are the type of things which you need to do yeah and you should be quite you know this should be bread and butter for you so essentially this has this is um, going to be a little you know dry at first but uh, i mean you will get the hang of it if you give enough time okay so first of all let's say we start with u of x so uh, again uh, wh whatever i am doing please please do it yourself check once okay uh, i mean without that you are never going to understand i mean i can just do it here uh, it does not matter huh please um, i mean you can just look at the calculation that's not a problem but do it yourself yeah that's that's the important thing so uh, first of all ux is uh, given by c of x minus y f of y dy over rn right now i am just doing a change of variable this i don't think i have to show you you guys can do it yourself uh, just a change of variable c of x minus y f of y dy is getting changed to c of y f of x minus y dy right okay this is just a change of variable so change of variable clear okay now therefore i want to show u is in c2 right so i first of all let's say uh, let's show u of x y exists the first derivative of u okay the um, partial derivative of u with respect to any x y so what is it it is u of x plus h e i minus u of x by h clear so what is it this is integral over r n c of y clear okay f of x plus h e i okay minus y minus f of x minus y by h dy right i can write do it like this yeah see what is the uh, idea behind this change of variable if i'm not doing this change of variable i have to do all of this in phi i don't want to do that in phi why i don't want to do that in phi because phi has a singularity at x equals to y yeah i want to avoid that so i just replace it by phi of y yeah so the singularity is getting replaced at y equals to 0 and after that uh, since this is this is all happening in with respect to x i am just putting everything on f and i'm working with it because f is c2 we know that yeah we know that f is c2 we have assumed if you remember we have assumed f is c c2 so c2 with a compact support okay right so um, and what is ei sorry ei is 0 0 this is just a 1 0 clear yeah? so is is coordinate it is uh, 1 okay so basically is the ith unit vector yeah uh, now you see f is c2 right so f of x plus h ei minus y minus f of x minus y by h what happens to that yeah this goes to f x i at the point x minus y i think you agree with me here yeah this is uniformly right uniformly yeah so uh, whenever i write uniformly i will just write it like this it goes uniformly as h tends to zero yeah i think you will agree with me here why because f is c2 c2 of rn it means that it is twice differentiable so basically it is once differentiable if it is twice differentiable it is definitely once differentiable if it is once differentiable it means that gradient of f yeah exists and is continuous right exists and is continuous yeah and what is gradient of f gradient of f is f x1 f xn clear okay so this particular every each component is exists and is continuous if f of x i so let's say f of x i exists and is continuous what does that mean it means that uh, this particular thing converges to this this is just, just a definition of f of x y right okay so this converges uniformly and hence and thus what happens u of x i at the point x this will be given by integral over rn okay 
C of Y, C of Y, del F, del XI, at the point X minus Y, DY, this is for I equals to uh, 1 to N. Clear? Yeah, I can write it. Why? Because I'm just, you see, uh, UXI, if I'm just taking limit H tends to 0 on both sides of this thing, yeah, I can take the limit inside H tends to 0 because, I mean, the, the integration is with respect to Y. So, there is nothing to worry about. I can take this inside. If I take this inside, this particular thing converges to U, yeah. So, uh, UXI uh, is basically integral over Rn, C of Y, del F, del XI, X minus Y, TY, yeah. And similarly, you can also take another... Um, derivative here u x i x i yeah now you think of u x i as some phi and do the exact same thing yeah so it what will happen it will be phi of y the fundamental solution del square f del x i uh, let's do it like the j yeah del x j i mean it does not matter i mean for now but okay so this is i j is between 1 to n clear yeah so, this expression I am taking again with respect to FJ. I am doing exactly the same thing which I did. See, F is C2. So, the same kind of argument works on uh, the gradient of the partial derivative of F with respect to XI. Yeah? And that will give you D2F, uh, DXI, DXJ. Right? Uh, so, that is you know, your UXI, XJ. So, what does that say? See, this expression on the right hand side. Yeah? This is continuous with respect to Y. Yes or no? You do understand what I am trying to do. This, this is a continuous, this expression, yeah? This is continuous with respect to x. Please remember, this is continuous with, see, here there is a singularity with respect to y, yeah? But I don't care because this is with respect to x. This is a continuous function with respect to x, yeah? And so what we can say is, and u is a function which is a function of x. So essentially, therefore, I can say that u is in C2 of are you clear? Okay. Right. So now, uh, the second part, yeah, and this is the difficult part actually to prove, yeah. So please, I mean, stay with me. Uh, you have to show minus Laplacian u equals to f in Rn. Huh? Okay. So how to show this? The part two. So to show, to show minus Laplacian of u equals to f in Rn. Okay. How do we show that? See, uh, please remember that phi blows up near y equals to 0. Right. Phi blows up near y equals to 0. So, what we are going to do is we are going to break Rn into two parts. Yeah. One part is, uh, I mean, we will take a ball of radius, uh, I mean, center at origin and radius epsilon and outside the ball. We will take this integral in two parts. Okay. So, from here, what do you get? Laplacian of u of x is given by integral R a. I will just break it up. B0 epsilon phi of y delta x of f of x minus y dy. Okay. Why I am writing delta x? See, there are two variables x and y. So, uh, it, it makes sense to write what is this, I mean, the Laplacian is with respect to which variable. So, here it is with respect to x variable, right? So, delta x of f of x minus y. If I am taking the sum, it will be sum, right? So, if you take the sum of this thing over i equals to j from 1 to n, then it becomes this, right? And again, it is in Rn. I am taking, uh, breaking up into two parts. One is ball with 0 epsilon and one is Rf minus B0 epsilon. Okay. And you have phi of y phi of y delta x of f of x minus y dy. Clear? Okay. Now, once I have this thing, I will just write it like this. I epsilon plus j epsilon. Clear? Two parts. This is I epsilon, this is j epsilon. Yeah. This is what I am writing. So, now, let's do what I epsilon is. I epsilon. So, mod I epsilon. Yeah. This is what? This is in integral b 0 epsilon epsilon phi of y delta x of x minus y dy. Yes, this is there. 
see here this particular expression this expression f is in c2 so delta x yeah delta c delta what is the relation between d2 and delta relation between d2 and delta if you are confused here d2 in two variables just think it is u x x u x y u y x u y y and what is delta delta is just the sum of these two so basically delta is trace of d2 clear trace of d2 so essentially here also this delta is just some uh, coefficients of d2 right i i was sum of some coefficients since f is c2 this particular thing has a bound on the so this is a ball right so it's a bounded set yeah so um, it's a kind now f is c2 it means the double derivative exists and it is continuous so all the partial double derivative means derivative exists and they are continuous so delta x of f is continuous function on this ball i can take the maximum and i can put it outside okay so let's take that and do i mean get it outside so this is less than equal d2 f i'm taking the maximum of this thing l infinity of r n yeah the for some of you who know some major theory you guys understand what i'm trying to write here but uh, for others let me give you this so let's say f yeah f is a continuous function on a bounded set let's say yeah uh, l infinity of r n if i'm just writing it like this this is basically the maximum of mod f okay over r n okay r n can be changed to some omega so l infinity r n is maximum of f uh, whenever i'm writing the norm of l infinity norm it means i'm just taking the supremum the maximum norm uh, here the maximum exists please remember the f is in r n it does not matter c f is in r n but the maximum exists because f is in c c there is a compact support right that is why the maximum is attained and hence i can write otherwise you, you just write it as supremum okay just think of it like this so this is uh, i take the maximum of d2f and put it outside now i am only left out with c of y dy over p 0 epsilon okay the mod of this thing now see let's do this part b 0 epsilon c of y dy okay so this is b 0 epsilon okay let's do it for n greater than 3 so for for n greater than equal to 3 hmm? n equals to 2 i want you guys to check yourself huh? so this is what it is 1 by n alpha n n minus 2 is there no i forgot to write it n minus 2 one yeah if you remember please uh, check what is p of y let's check this part what is p of y yeah 1 by n n minus 2 alpha n 1 by mod x mod power n minus 2 if you remember this alpha n yeah i did not write this alpha n is the volume of the unit ball in rn unit ball in rn clear okay so uh, for uh, all of you guys who understand measure theory uh, this is just a measure of the unit ball yeah so uh, n minus 2 uh, 1 by mod x to the power mod y to the power n minus uh, uh, 2 okay uh, dy this should be the case so let you see this this is basically a constant dependent on n throw it outside so this is some cn i will write it like sub cn yeah i am not really interested in that thing b0 epsilon dy by mod y to the power n minus 2 now you remember your integration on radial function so by integration integration of radial function formula so radial function radial function what do you get we get that this particular integral dy but mod y whole power n minus 2 over b0 epsilon yeah can be written like this 0 to epsilon yeah del b 0 r yeah uh, dr by r power n minus 2 sorry uh, i should write it like this
1 by r power n minus 2 okay and d xi okay no it should be dr no it should be so essentially what i am doing is this see first of all i am integrating this thing on the unit ball okay integrating this thing on the unit ball on the unit ball yeah this is a radial function so basically this is constant so essentially what am i going to get so let me write it properly so essentially what i'm going to get is from here 1 by r to the power n minus 2 okay and then uh, the volume of the del b 0 epsilon yeah that is r to the power n minus 1 dr yeah from there r to the power n minus 1 dr of course our constant is there yeah but i'm not writing all that i mean that is there so if i calculate this thing it is basically 0 to epsilon yeah see this is up to a constant yeah this mark equals to is up to a constant okay so 0 to epsilon y by r power n minus 2 to the power r minus n minus 1 dr yeah this is just an integration with respect to radial function see what am i doing is here is this i want to integrate it over this particular ball so i integrate it over this uh, i mean just the boundary of the ball on the boundary this function so let's say this boundary is r of radius r yeah this is the boundary of a ball with radius r so if that happens in the on that boundary this particular thing is 1 by r power n minus 2 right and after that what happens is you are just integrating it between 0 to epsilon you are just taking r to a, r from 0 to epsilon yeah so this is why it is coming so um, 1 by r power n minus 2 r to the power n minus 1 this is the volume of the ball um, i mean this particular sorry the surface area of this uh, ball inside okay so that is why r power n minus 1 now it gets cancelled out and it becomes r dr so that is r square yeah? it becomes r dr yeah? so this is up to a constant yeah please remember this is up to a constant up to a constant yeah i'm not writing all that up to a constant yeah here also same thing yeah up to a constant so this is essentially this is epsilon square by 2 okay so uh, uh, see what is happening here is this if i take the bound on this thing if i write it so uh, i epsilon mod i epsilon therefore mod i epsilon yeah this is this is less than equal d2f the l infinity norm of this the maximum of d2f d2f l infinity of rn again why this happens because f is a, has a compact support right so we can write it like this and yeah and you see the mod of the integral and mod of the integral is less than equals to the integral of mod right so mod of the integral is less than equals to the integral of mod mod of integral f is less than equals to integral mod f yeah so if you write it like this then essentially that is what is mod of this? This is epsilon by 2 up to a constant. So essentially, there is a constant which depends on n times epsilon square. By 2, again, it is getting absorbed by the constant. See, here we are not really interested in this constant. Yeah? All we are interested in is getting some estimates. The constants are always there. Why? Because you see, now if we take epsilon towards 0, essentially this i epsilon is 0. This constant does not contribute anything. I mean, uh, this half and uh, there are other constants right this 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 constants all of these are getting absorbed in this c clear okay so um, uh, this c is there and this uh, particular expression d2f the infinity norm time f square epsilon square now this is fixed right the maximum of f is fixed so maximum of f is fixed so essentially i epsilon is bounded by epsilon square now as epsilon is small you know if you take epsilon small enough what is going to happen if you, uh, you can actually say that uh, the mod of i epsilon mod of i epsilon this is small so this goes to zero okay uh, now please please check the n equals to 2k okay please check the n equals to 2k now uh, for j epsilon now let's do the j epsilon part yeah this is given by integral over rn 
minus b0 epsilon okay phi of y phi of y delta y of f of x minus y dy clear this is the case now this is equals to minus integral rn minus b0 epsilon okay mm. I am doing integration by parts here, integration by parts, yeah, integration by parts. What is it? It is phi of y, uh, sorry, it is d phi of y, d uh, y with respect to f of x minus y dy, clear, okay, plus on the boundary, del b 0 epsilon, okay of y del f del gamma of x minus y dy. Okay, so let us explain what we uh, why we write it like this. See, integration by part. As you know that uh, why when we do integration by parts, one derivative comes to this part with a negative sign. So negative sign, one derivative comes to this part. So this loses one derivative, this gains one derivative. Yeah. So that happens. Plus on the boundary, see um, what is the boundary of this domain? This domain is essentially this is b zero epsilon. Let's say the domain is essentially this thing. Yeah. What is the boundary? The boundary is the shared common boundary with the ball. Okay. So that is why this boundary. What is gamma? Where, where gamma is the generally we write unit outward normal to the domain, right? To the domain. The domain is here. Outward normal is this side. So basically, this is the inward normal to the ball, right? You understand what I'm saying? See, generally this gamma is the outward normal to the domain. Yeah. This the domain is outside, inside out actually. Yeah. So the outward normal is basically inside the ball, yeah. So gamma is the inward normal, inward normal to the ball B zero epsilon. Yes, yeah? this is the inward normal. Yeah. Okay. I I hope this is clear. Yeah. The normal to the boundary, boundary of the ball B zero epsilon. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Inward normal. Okay. Now let's right i mean let's write it, this particular thing as uh, again this is k epsilon and the next one is l epsilon this is k epsilon this is l epsilon okay now uh, therefore mod l epsilon yeah what is it let's check mod l epsilon i i am doing this part yeah this is mod of del b zero epsilon phi of y del f del gamma of x minus y ds y okay this is less than equals to integral uh, del b 0 epsilon okay uh, mod phi of y and the derivative uh, sorry the norm of del f by del gamma at the point x minus y ds y now you see uh, what happens to this thing f is c2 with a compact support so definitely uh, the one the first derivative is also comp continuous and it is bounded yeah on this ball so essentially um, this is a compacted right i can take the maximum of this outside so essentially uh, this is i can just write it as df l infinity of if you want you can just write it like Rn only, yeah? no problem. The maximum of f uh, del f on Rn I can just say. See, why this works? Because you see, if you remember, f has a compact support. f is uh, twice continuous differentiable. So it is once continuous differentiable. Huh? And the, the first derivative is also continuous. It is once differentiable and the first derivative is also continuous. Because the second derivative is continuous. So the first derivative has to exist and it is continuous. Yeah. So, if the first derivative is continuous, yeah, this is a compact set. There is a maxima which is attained. Yeah, that maxima is of course always less than equals the to the maxima of um, f over whole Rn. You are taking the max. See, the maxima over uh, any unit ball like this, the boundary of a unit ball. 
is always dominated by the maximum over whole RN. Of course, you see, yeah, because this is a very big set. Yeah, so I'm just doing it like that, and then I have integral over del b zero epsilon uh, phi of y mod phi of y ds y. Okay, so if I write it like this, yeah, what happens here? So you see, phi of y is radial function on this ball. Uh, boundary of the ball. What did I say? Radial functions on the boundary, it becomes constant, right? So it is essentially what is p of i? So for n equals to for n equals to again the n equals to two case, you guys have to do it yourself. Yeah, del b zero epsilon mod p of y dsy. Let's do that. Yeah, what happens to this? See, this is essentially del b. 0 epsilon phi of y mod phi of y is some constant is there yeah some, some constant is there i'm not writing all that constant yeah but here essentially it is 1 by mod y to the power n minus 2 d s y okay see on this ball on del b 0 epsilon this is particularly this is essentially a constant right so this is c times 1 by epsilon power n minus 2 and then you have integral over del b 0 epsilon d s y yeah which is what it is essentially the integral over the uh, boundary of the ball okay the surface uh, with respect to the surface on the surface on the surface yeah so that will give you the um, surface area of the unit ball so it, uh, there is some constant again which is getting accommodated here and that will give you epsilon power n minus 1. Is this clear? See, surface area of a unit ball is some constant times epsilon power, uh, not unit ball, a ball with center epsilon is epsilon power n minus 1. Yeah, so that is what it is getting outside. There is a less than equals to sign, sorry. Yeah, I should write it like this. And uh, I should actually, um, yeah, this is also less than equals to, there are some constants here. Yeah, there are some constants here. You should write it like this. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, here there is no, here I just calculated this particular thing, yeah. So there, there is a constant, of course, this is a constant, yeah. Uh, so all of that is, be, so this equality is up to a constant, okay. I, you can write it like that or you can just write a constant, yeah. Okay, so this happens, this is C pi S times epsilon. So essentially what is happening here is you can bound mod L epsilon uh, with C epsilon, yeah. So therefore, I mean, please take this part, mod L epsilon, can be bounded by is less than equals to c epsilon mod log epsilon okay this is for n equals to 2 and c epsilon for n greater than equal 3 please check this part huh? and similarly in the early part also I, I forgot to write it here i epsilon is less than equals to of course a constant times epsilon square if n is greater than equal 3 this we already saw this is also a constant right i mean there's nothing to write and it is constant times epsilon square log epsilon okay if n equals to 2 so this part you have to check okay so here also this part you have to check yes okay once that is there so L epsilon is bounded. I mean, this is C epsilon. Huh? As epsilon goes to zero, I mean, this is very small. So I don't have to worry about all that. Now, I have to worry about K epsilon. So what is K epsilon? K epsilon is integral Rn minus B zero epsilon. Okay. Delta phi of Y, F of X minus Y dy, dy minus integral del B zero epsilon del b 0 epsilon del phi del gamma of x minus y f of x minus y ds of y okay so this is actually equals to minus del b 0 epsilon del phi by del gamma of x minus y f of minus y dy right see why this is happening because here see this is the fundamental solution this solves laplacian of phi solves the 
Laplace equation, yeah, Laplacian of phi is zero. Delta phi is zero, yeah, for all x, which is for all x not equal to zero. So essentially here, y cannot have been zero anywhere, right? So this is outside the ball. So Laplacian of phi is zero, and in that case, the whole thing is zero, yeah. So in k epsilon, I only have this particular expression to uh, deal with. Yeah? Now let's deal with this expression. So now, what is gamma? Gamma is here, it is minus y by mod y. I hope all of you guys know this thing. Yeah. So, see why this minus is there because it is inward pointing normal, inward pointing normal to del b. Okay. Zero yeah, that is why minus sign is there. And what is y by mod y? See, this is r by mod r essentially. Yeah. So uh, you do realize, I mean, the unit normal is given by x by mod x. Yeah. Not sorry, sorry, it's not r by mod r. It is x by mod x. Yeah. So uh, that is always there. But since it is inward, it is there is a minus sign. Okay. So gamma of y looks like minus y by mod y, and therefore, therefore del phi by del gamma of x minus y. How? What is it? This is gradient of phi at the point x minus y yeah dot gamma hmm? what is gradient of phi at the point x minus y so this you guys have to calculate yourself yeah it is let me write it down it is 1 by n alpha n epsilon power n minus 1 hmm? this is on del b zero epsilon yeah okay see phi of x minus y please remember what is phi of x minus y phi of x minus y is um, 1 by n alpha n okay r power n minus uh, sorry there is a n minus 2 is there eh? minus 2 r power n minus 1 uh, it's not r it is mod x minus y let me write it properly 1 by x minus y whole power n minus uh, 2 right sorry n minus 1 n minus 1 uh, n minus 2 yeah sorry n minus 2 uh, uh, you see n minus 2 where is it mod x to the power n minus 2 right okay so so uh, this is there now uh, see x and y yeah i am taking y on the boundary y see in this integral in this integral y is on the boundary of the ball yeah and x is i mean x is not equal to y in the other case right x is not equal to y because since since phi of x minus y will look like this yeah uh, therefore, if you take the derivative of this thing, d phi of y, uh, so maybe I can just uh, write it like this. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. Yeah, here it is fine, and then here it is uh, phi of phi of y. Yeah, this is the mistake I did. Sorry, sorry, this is the mistake I which I did. So here and this also here also. Sorry, one second. See, this is delta phi, del, delta phi of y, right? So this is phi of y. This is why I couldn't understand. Yeah. So okay, uh, this is fine. Yeah. Now, uh, so in this case, you see, this is. Uh, let me write it properly. Yeah. So let me write it like this. This is uh, at the point y. This is y dot gamma. Okay. So this is y phi of y is equal to this times mod y to the power n minus okay p of y is this okay in p of y is this you do realize that i can just take the derivative of this thing yeah mm, so d c of y yeah why i can do this thing see y is on the boundary y is on the boundary of this ball yeah and uh, so uh, definitely i can take the derivative here because y is not equal to zero yeah it is on the boundary it can never be zero yeah so i can take this thing and this is minus one by n alpha n okay y by mod y uh, whole power n so please check this part yeah please check this part this is for y not equals to zero see y is on the boundary so y cannot be zero and hence i can take the derivative here 
yeah uh, because except at zero everywhere it is very well defined so i can just take the derivative and it becomes like this yeah okay so once that is there then what is k epsilon k epsilon can be written as minus 1 by n alpha n epsilon power n minus 1 okay this one yeah integral del b 0 epsilon okay f of x minus y ds y clear i can write it like this see this i just calculated and after that uh, del phi del gamma at the point y on the ball is given by um, this thing right it is given by this thing yeah i just calculated that uh, i mean del phi del gamma which is this why this is uh, why this is the case because uh, gradient of phi which is this this is gradient of phi right gradient of phi is this and after that gamma um, is minus y by mod y if i put it together on the ball it is becoming 1 by n alpha n epsilon power n minus 1 clear okay so um, k epsilon if you write it down it becomes this and this is equals to the average of del b x epsilon f of y ds y clear okay what am i doing here i just changed the variable so i've just shifted the origin from or zero to x yeah and uh, so here the center is at x and that is why this f becomes f of y you just change of variable yeah okay so and but the uh, i mean the you see if you do the change of variable the volume of the unit ball does not change so essentially this becomes this uh, this remains the same and i'm just writing it like an average okay so it becomes minus average of this now this goes to where if you remember minus f of x as epsilon tends to zero okay please remember i am not using mean value theorem here but this is actually true i mean this this particular thing as epsilon tends to zero is always true given f is continuous. okay so i mean you can you can find you can check check that the average of uh, over omega let's say okay f of y ds y this converges to f of let's say x is in omega yeah x is in omega which is center at omega basically a ball omega is a ball and x is the center of the ball so it becomes f of x okay as epsilon tends to zero this is omega is b x epsilon let's say okay you can you can you can show this thing that in the average of f over b x epsilon yeah so del sorry let me write it properly yeah del b x epsilon okay uh, so the average of f of y dsy goes to f of x this is again in assignment yeah please check so this holds for any f in is continuous huh? continuous function you can do this thing so once you do this then k epsilon goes to minus um, fx now if you put all of this together yeah so what is happening here let's let's check yeah let's go back so this is a long way uh, okay this particular expression uh what is it yeah this expression i epsilon on the ball the whole thing is going to zero we have checked that yeah on the ball you see i epsilon is going to a zero so as epsilon tends to zero this goes to zero and this particular thing on rn minus b0 epsilon yeah the first expression you see uh, the first expression is l epsilon yeah if you remember uh, yeah the first where is it it's a big calculation once again huh? yeah so this is k epsilon plus l epsilon right l epsilon is n greater than equal 3 this is Mm, like c epsilon as epsilon goes to zero this particular expression l epsilon is very small right and the same holds for n equals to 2 also and what about k epsilon this k epsilon this is this goes to minus f of x yeah so hence hence u solves minus Laplacian of u equals to f in omega yeah and hence you have the proof so essentially what we did so let me recall a uh, quick recall uh, we wanted to solve the spozo equation for that we found out the fundamental solution which is just a solution of the harmonic function in rn minus zero use that thing and uh, we did something called a convolution okay this is called a convolution which we did this is called a convolution we did the convolution defined the ux and we showed that this ux actually 
solve the Poisson equation given f is a nice function, f is cc, f is a twice differentiable function with compact support. Yes, and we have showed that. So, with this, we are going to end today's uh, lecture.